first element here, I think I, I know some of you have heard about this, but I want to use this as a foundation. There are a number of form-based codes that use um, this uh, planning idea called the transect as, as, a, as a basis for the code. Uh, we've done it in a lot of our codes. Uh, you'll see it in, in any number of codes throughout the country. I don't know if you, yeah. is yours transect based? Yeah. Okay. So the idea is, uh, this, this sort of evolved from sort of landscape uh, design and ecology. Um, how many of you have heard this? Should be a, just out of curiosity. Okay, quite a few. All right. Uh, well, I'll be quick. <coughs> the basic idea is that if you were to cut a slice through nature, um, you would find that there are these sort of different environments. You know, it might be the beach or the dune or the grove or the forest. You know, in the Midwest, we have a sort of different slice of nature that you cut through. And the idea is that you know, within each of those zones, there's a sort of a series, there's a natural environment that basically works for that area. There's certain plant types, certain animal types that will live well in the forest, but they just don't work well, you know, on the dune. They won't live there. And so you have these sort of immersive environments as you experience nature. Um, and, you know, they, they fuzz a little bit at the edges. You know, one, they bleed into the other a little bit. But in the natural world, there are these environments that more or less work that way. And the notion is that we um, should create human environments that essentially work the same way. So there are, there are a series of environments from the most rural to the most urban that there, if you cut a slice through cities in an ideal, in sort of an idealistic way, this is what you would get. You have a series of different environments and different character of uh, neighborhoods um, throughout your city. And that would go from very, either very rural or very urban on one end uh, or the other. So uh, this seems like something that is you know, planning 101 and very logical. But the reality is most of our practice doesn't support this idea. We've kind of evolved a lot of our practices over the year, whether you're engineering, planning, architecture, uh, environmental, uh, et cetera. Most of our practices tend to default a little bit towards sort of one size fits all solutions. And we'll provide the same solution regardless of the environment that we're trying to create. And what this is promoting is the idea that know first and foremost what the character is of the area that you're trying to create, and then we'll set up rules to support that. So this is another way of looking at it. Um, this is, uh, actually this is a document we're working on uh, with Oakland Park, uh, where we have, if you can imagine the most dense to sort of the least dense on that end, this one does not have the total world uh, on one end. But you essentially have a series of environments that are different scale and character. And I think if you go around your community, you'll begin to recognize these intuitively. You'll say, okay, well here's an area that feels like that's our center kind of character. Here's Here's another area that is more transitional. I'll show some more slides to, to give examples of these. But basically, more dense to least dense, primarily mixed use to primarily residential, smaller blocks, bigger blocks. And there's a whole series of these as we go through this. So I'll go through what, what this chart has done is essentially created six categories. But to say there's this, what we, and we call them transect zones or T zones. T1 through T6 to identify these different environments. T1 is the, nat the most natural, essentially permanently undeveloped or land that we will never, or more land that you will never develop. So in this case, it's <coughs> you know, it, it might be a street corridor, for example, here in that uh, state park or, you know, or something like that of sufficient large size that it really will never be developed. A small city park is not. That's a different, that's a different T2, as you go up the ladder, is something a little more rural. So there, there is evidence of human occupation here. There might be farms, there might be sort of a small crossroads or a hamlet of some kind. Uh, but it, again, it's a very modest scale of human uh, habitation. Each of these zones, the T2 through T6 zones, allow for some sort of mix of uses in this, in this theory, in this idea. But the degree of the mixed use varies quite a bit. So again, in a T2 area, you know, it's it's rural in nature, so it might be more you know farming, might be more agriculture. But you know, there still might be a store, there might be a you know a community store or something that that would exist in this environment. T3 is what we often call the suburban uh, district, and 
That, though, when we talk about this, what we're really talking about is sort of that pre-war suburban neighborhood. So it's, it's the places like a Brookside, you know, that is largely single family in character. So it has that sort of historic single family character to it, where the buildings are up a little closer to the street, the garages are in back, um, you have a more uh, comfortable walking environment, and it's probably connected to uh, or adjacent to some sort of commercial center that people can walk to. Um, but that's the general character. This is a new example, a newly built example of what we call a T3. Very basic, primarily a single family zone. As you go up the ladder a little bit more, you notice the things that, that, that start to change. This is Quality Hill, this is what we would call a T4. Okay, T4, you have much more of a mixture of building type in it. So now you have apartment buildings, you have row homes, you might have some <coughs> apartment homes still in there. You have some smaller commercial operations on corners of intersections. You'll notice that the street pattern, you know, the buildings get a little bit tighter. But it's more common in this zone that you would have sidewalks right up to the curb with the tree well, uh, as opposed to what we had here, where you have the tree lawn. But not, it doesn't have to be that way, but that's the general notion that we're talking about. It could also look like this. We have a lot of neighborhoods in this region that were built from the 1880s to the 1930s that look like this, that have apartment buildings, sort of the, the original garden apartment buildings that were walk-up apartments, mixed in with single-family homes, mixed in with duplexes, and they'll grow up on streets that look a little bit like that. And they actually have a lawn frontage but there are an awful lot of neighborhoods in our region that, that look like that. We would call that a T4. It's much more of a mishmash of things that are happening. And as you go up the ladder, T5 is really a primarily mixed use and commercial environment. So this is, this is a place like the Plaza. You know? this, is, you know, this, is a, this is a new example of a place in um, the Denver area. But here you have retail and office and residential all mixed in to the same buildings very often. And then T6, as you go up the ladder, is the most dense. So this is your big city downtowns. Now the idea is you would sort of calibrate this for your own community. You know, so a T6 in Kansas City, Missouri is going to be different than what it is, you know, in a smaller city. But this that's the general notion that your biggest, tallest, densest buildings are at that scale. 